Amen. You may be seated. We have to realize that what the word of God promises, whether it's something that we rejoice over, or something that we look forward to facing, the word of God is still true. Amen. And when it tells us that we're going to be afflicted in many of the afflictions of the righteous, yes, sir. Yes. but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Amen. And what we have to realize, since the Bible said we're going to go through afflictions, it didn't say you were going to go through affliction because of sin. Mm -hmm. It didn't say you were going to go through affliction because of anything you've done in this life, but it says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes. So if we are righteous, we still have to realize that the word of God is still the truth, and if we are righteous, we still have to realize that we're going to go through tests and trials, and we're going to go through problems in this life, yes. but what we have yes. to realize is the promise of God is that yes. he will deliver us out of them all. Yes. And sometimes when we're going through our problems, when we begin to focus on what we're going through, we begin to focus on things that are surrounding us. Well, I've got this problem in my life, and I've got that problem in my life, and I just can't see how I'm going to make it through this. Well, you're not supposed to see how you're going to make it through this. You're going to have to see who's going to bring you through it. Yes. Hallelujah. And he's not a God that will come short of his promise. Whatever you find in the word of God that he's promised, I want you to know that he'll do whatever his word says he'll do. Yes. And not only will he do what his word says he'll do, he'll do for you whatever his word says he'll do. But yes. so we have to realize it's something that we have to do. But when we're going through our afflictions, many times we can't concentrate. We can't pray. We can't sing. We can't fast. We can't do anything. But sit there and watch that problem and have your own pity party. And I want to tell you, if you want to have a pity party, go ahead and have it. But just leave me off your invitation list. I don't do pity parties. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you something. Jesus Christ don't do pity parties. He has mercy. Hallelujah. But if you want somebody to get into your pity party and be down with you, hallelujah, don't call me, but begin to call on God and he's the one that can bring you out of your pity yes. party instead of trying to get someone else in it with you. Yes. Hallelujah. But the Bible still says many, not just a few, but many are the affliction of the righteous. And what we have to realize that because we are going through affliction, we can't look back on this and, Lord, what have I done? What did I, now, what, what did I do to get into this? The Bible doesn't say you have to do anything to get in of it. But we do have to realize that the way out of whatever we are going through is always the same direction. It's not north, south, east, or west. But the way out of every affliction that we go through is we have to go through Jesus Christ in order for to come out of that affliction. And if you're looking unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask to even think, you don't have to worry. You know that God is able to bring you out. And if you know that you're walking according to his will, his word declared that he will bring you out. But we don't want to go through anything. We want God to just snatch us out of it. But the only way you gain victory over your affliction is he has to take you through that affliction and bring you out on the other side. But we don't want to go through. Yeah. We just want God to bring us out. Yeah. Reach out and grab us. Yeah. Don't let me go through anything. Yeah. We got a microwave type of mentality. We want it done now. Yeah. We don't want to wait on anything. But I want you to know that the Bible says God's way is far above ours as the heavens are above the earth. No matter what you want him to do or when you want him to do it, it's not your choice. You don't make that decision. You make the decision that you're going to wait to do it his way. Yes. And if he don't do it his way, it's not going to be done. Yes. But we try to do things out by our own accord. Amen. <clears throat> well, I want this yesterday. Yes, yes. And we don't want to wait on God to do anything. That's right. But when we realize that no matter how much we scream and how much we cry, that we don't change God's time. 
And sometimes that's what we want to do. We feel like if we have this pity party for ourselves, and we invite everybody that we can to come to this pity party, and we get enough people there, we might be able to get God to change his timing for us. Amen. But I want you to know that no matter how long you are allowed to stay in a condition, if you are in Christ and you're believing him and you're standing on the word of God, whatever time he brings you out is at the perfect time. Amen. When we want to come out is before we have any problem. When we go get into a problem, we want him to bring us out immediately. And so many times, I tell it a lot of times, there was a young man that I used to be in church with and his daddy got him out of everything that he got into. He sold three houses to get his son out of three different problems that he got himself in. And every time he got himself in a problem, daddy got him out of it. But when he got into the fourth problem, daddy didn't have a house to save. Daddy didn't have any way of getting him out. And I want to tell you right now, when he got into that problem and the Lord took him all the way through it, he's preaching in Texas right now. All right. But as long as that he kept getting in a problem and getting out of a problem and never went through it, he always went back. Amen. But when God takes you through something, he don't just bring you through it, but he gives you victory over it. Yes. If you don't have the victory over what you're going through, you're certain to go right back and fail at that same thing over and over and over again. But when you get the victory over it and the enemy bring that same temptation back to you, you won't have to fall for it, but at least if you're going to fall for a temptation, don't let the devil use the same one over and over again. Make him do something new at least. But so many times we go into problems and the only thing we want to do is cry and complain. But God wants us to stand up, not of our own accord, but stand up in him. Yes. And allow him to bring us out of it. Yes. And know that when he brings us out of it, that we're going to have to, if it takes God to bring you out of the problem, it takes God to keep you out of that problem. That's right. And sometimes we want to get into something, and once we get out of it, we feel like, okay, we can do things on our own. And I've seen many people who have came out and say, well, now that I'm out, now I'm ready to go back and tackle everybody that was in the same thing that I'm in. And they go right back in and they invite those same type of people around them and they're going to help them out. But next thing you know, they're back into that same problem again. What am I telling That sometimes when you come out of a problem, you got to change your surroundings. That's right. You got to change the personnel That's that you hang right. out with. You got to get away from people that are going that same way. And unless God sends you back after those people, leave them there. That's right. But so many times, and we have a heart for this, and sometimes the enemy uses what we feel. Well, I know how I was when I was there, and God has brought me out, so I know I can help those others. I can bring them out. But that word, I, is the one to get you in trouble. If God don't bring them out, you can't do nothing. That's if right. God don't change their heart, you can't do nothing. And I'll tell you one thing. If God don't send you back after them, you still can't do nothing. That's right. Because so many times we get ourselves in trouble, and we end up, in and out and in and out because we never really allow God to take control of our life. Amen. But when you give God control, we have to realize that God wants to be Lord of our life. Yes. That means He is our absolute ruler and owner. Amen. And when God is your absolute ruler and owner, He tells you what to do and when to do it and how to do it. Amen. But so many times we don't want to do it God's way. Yes. And don't, oh God, don't Amen. let him take a long time. Because right, we know he need help then. Yeah. 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 I, I, I know I'm the one that help him too. Yeah. I know what I'm going through and if he ain't brought me out yet he must need some help. Amen. So I'm going to help him out. And when you step in to help, you not only stop his progress, but you start the process all over again. Amen. Because anytime you give God a problem, when you take it back from him, you don't just give it back, you start the process all over again. 
and you go through the same thing that got you into the problem, the same thing that kept you in the problem, you'll end up going through it over and over again because you fail to realize that it takes God to bring you out of it and it's at his time and not caught in your time. That's right. Amen. But when God brings us out, he does a thorough job. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Yes, he does. When we get ourselves out, and we sometimes, temporarily, we get ourselves out of our problem. Yes. But when we get ourselves out, we can't keep ourselves out. Amen. No matter what you do, you can't get out of a problem and stay out of it unless you allow God to handle that thing for you. And you have to relinquish yourself to him because God never does things our way. Amen. And sometimes when God does things, many times we don't even realize that God has done it because we are looking for him to do it from the west and he does it from the east and we miss out totally on it and we don't even realize that he's already taken care of the problem for us and we're still warring and fighting when God has already taken the problem, taken care of the problem yes. but he didn't do it our way and because we, he didn't do it our way and we don't understand God's way, we think he's not done yet. Yes. Hallelujah. You might have a financial problem and you ask God and tell him how much money you need and you don't get it. You don't get a quarter. And you're just worrying and complaining. And God, will you take care of this problem? I need this. I need that. And you went to the grocery store. And you walked up to the counter. And you knew you had $100 worth of groceries. And they charged you $40 for it. God has already given you part of your money that you had. But yes. because he didn't do it your way, you missed out on the blessing. And you're still begging and murmuring and complaining about what God hasn't done because he didn't do it your way. He's never going to do it your way. I always ask God for things, and I used to try to figure out how he did, how he was going to do it. Yeah. And I can yeah. say I'm better than a thousand. I haven't been right yet. Amen. He's never done things my way. Yes. And he never has done things your way, and he's not going to start now. You have to realize that when you have tests and trials coming to your life, you're going to have to let go and let God. Yes. And once you're given him that problem, also give him the freedom to do it when, how he yes. want to. Yes. And when you allow him to do it his way, I want you to know, when you know that God is going to do it and you have faith in God, yes. you don't have to wait till it's manifested yes. in order to begin to give him praise. Yes. You begin to act like the problem has already been solved. And while you're acting like the problem has already solved, you'll find out sooner or later you yes. look back and it's no longer an act. It's yes. already been done. Yes. Why? Because you begin to give him praise because yes. you believe that yes. he was going to do it. And you praise him in advance. And while you were yet praising, you find out the problem already solved. Right. Right. But you can't do it. You, got, you can't wait. Well, I just can't wait on it. Yeah. You know, I, I need this today. On, but you man. have to let go and let God. That's and right. when you put it into his hand, have faith to believe that God is able to keep what you have given unto him. Have faith to believe that God is going to answer what he said he was going to do. He's going to do what his word proclaims. And if you wait on him, he'll do what his word says he'll do for you. So many times we can tell others how great and how much faith we have in God. Yes, yes. Yeah, and I, I know God's going to do that to you. For you now. Believe God. He's going to do that for you. And what about when it comes to us? Yes, yes. A lot of times it's easy to point out there and say, yeah, I know God's going to do it for you. Amen. That's right. But what about when we leave? That's right. And we go to God. Yes. Do we go back and cancel out everything we've asked God by our action? Yes, Lord. Do you know it's a slap in the face of God for you to ask him for something and then tell somebody he's not going to do it? Yes. And so many times we do these things, we ask God and we'll go down and we'll, we won't tell some people, but we got a certain little gang that is going to agree with us. Yeah. And we'll tell them what God's not going to do for us. And when you say he's not going to do it, you're right. 
Mm. For the Bible says, as thou hast believed, yes. so be it done unto thee. Yes. So you just ask and believe, and then you went back and you canceled it. Yes. And then you go back and you start all over again, and when he don't meet your next schedule, which is your schedule, mm. not his schedule, yeah. you cancel it out again when you say, well, I guess I, I've been waiting this long, and, and I guess God's not going to do it, so I guess I'll go ahead and do something else. I, I can't, can't make my bill, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and get this second and third job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you something. If you decide you're going to do it, God will watch you. Mm -hmm. And he will watch you until you decide yeah. to allow him to do yes. it. And you will work your fingers to the bone. Right. And you will spend all your time on the job. Yeah. You will yeah. stop coming to church because you are too busy. And he will watch you work yourself crazy. Yeah. Until you decide, I can't this first job wasn't doing it. The second one's not doing it. The third one's not doing it. So I guess I need to go get a fourth one. Or maybe just in time, you'll think, maybe I ought to turn to the one that owned the first, second, and third job. And if I turn to him, I won't have to get a fourth one. Because he is able to supply my need, not according to how many jobs I have, but according to his riches and glory. Sometimes we want to bypass everything that God has for us to do. Amen. We want to remind him of what he said he would do. Mm -hmm. yes. But we have to realize that most of the promises in the word of God has a condition to it. All right. Amen. And that condition that's required is not a condition with God. It's a condition with you and I. Amen. Yeah. If my people yeah. who are called by my name yeah. would humble themselves yeah. and pray and seek my face and right. turn from their wicked way. Then. Wow. then. All right. God doesn't do anything. All right, man. We have to do that. Yes. Right. We're his people. Yeah. Right. But we want to tell God what we want him to do, but we don't want to meet the condition that he tells us to do. Yeah. Well, God, why don't you go ahead and give me this? But I haven't done anything that you said do. But why I still need this. But one thing you have to realize, God will not override his word Amen. to do anything that we ask him to do. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, asked according to his will. Uh -huh. And if we don't know his will, we can't ask according to his will. That's and right. you know, his will for you is in here. Amen. You've got to find it. You've got to find out what God's will is for you. And when you know that you're walking according to, the, to God's will, he will withhold no good thing from them to walk upright before him. Amen. But you have to know that you're walking upright before him. And he said, call me into remembrance. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Tell him what his word says. Yes. And I want you to know, if you tell God what his word yes. says, yes. and you are telling him according to his will yes. concerning you, I want you to know there is nothing that you can find in the word of God that God won't do for you. Yes. yes. Every one of you. Yes. But you have to meet the conditions that God requires you. And when you meet those conditions, he'll say, hey, I, I can't stop it. He can't help himself. He has to do it. Yes, sir. Because his word said. And he's not going to come short of his word. Yes. But he's not going to change his word either. Amen. Hallelujah. So many times we look for God to do things according to our will. Yes, Lord. Because I need this. Yes. And we can say, well, I've worked hard. God, I've ministered to you. I've did this. I've done that. And all the things that we can tell God we have done for him, which he already knows if you've done them. Yeah. But many times we want to basically bribe God on what we want. Yeah. By what we have done for him. <laughs> Do you know what? You could spend the rest of your life doing everything you know and everything you can for God. And you still, we come short of being worthy of the blessing that God gives us. Amen. He blesses us because of his love for us. Amen. That's right. That's right. And it's through our obedience to him that we show our love for him. Amen. That's right. And if we can prove to God that we love him and we know that he already loves us, regardless of what we have done, regardless of who we are, God loves us. It's unconditional. The Bible says, while we were yet in our sin, Christ died for the ungodly. Yes. Doesn't mean that we was for him when he died. When we were warring and fighting against him, he died for us. Amen. So that's the kind of love he has for us. But what do we do? Do we show our love to God when he is not answering what we request? He's not doing when we want him to do it. Do we really honor him? Do we really praise him? Or do we say, well, when he blessed me, I'm going to praise him. Mm -hmm. When he beats my need, I'm going to praise him. When I get what I ask him to do and he answers my prayer, I'm going to praise him. But yeah. we have to realize that many times the only way you get what you are asking for God is that you begin to praise him while you're waiting. And you begin to think in your heart and believe God that he's going to do it. And when is he going to do it? Not important. How is he going to do it? Not important. Is he going to do it? Yes. Yes. That's the only thing we need to know is that God is going to do it. And leave it up to him in his time and in his way. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Lord. So many times we cancel out what God has available to us. That's right. We cancel it out. Yes. In Mark chapter 11, verse 24, it says, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Amen. And many times we override that scripture, and we go on to you shall have them. We can remember that. Yeah. But we forget the first part of the scripture. Yes. Therefore, I say unto you, what? Things so ever ye desire when you pray, I'll pray, Lord, and your word say I can have it. Mm -hmm. But we leave that one word out, or that one clause out, believe that ye shall receive it. Yes. And so many times we wish that we can have it. We think that we can have it. But the Bible didn't say as you wish or as you think. It said, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Yes. So we have to trust God enough that if he's a God that loved me enough that he went to the cross and suffered and died in my place that I might have a right to the tree of life. 
Well, then just maybe if he loved me enough to do all of this, then maybe he would just give me what I'm asking for. And when you can say that enough that you believe in your heart that God is going to do what you ask, then you can relinquish it into his hand and begin to give him praise just like you pray and believe for your paycheck yes. on Friday yes. when you work all week. We have already planned on, okay, here's what I'm going to do Friday when I get my paycheck. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go buy clothes. I'm going to go buy shoes. I'm going to pay my bills. But you know what? There's something wrong with that thinking. You know, you don't have your paycheck. Right. Amen. <laughs> It may not even be written yet. I know. That's right. But you believe enough that you depend on it, that you go on and act upon the fact that you think that that crooked boss of yours is going to give you a paycheck uh-huh. and you have already spent it and you haven't got it. But you got a great God that's over the top. Yes. Don't you believe in him that he'll give you hey. what you ask for? Yes. Don't you believe it until you receive it. Yes. Hallelujah. We want to believe it when we receive it. But you believe it until you receive it. And if you believe that you're going to receive it, just like you go and spend that paycheck before you got it, why can't you begin to give God praise when you haven't had that problem? When you're still going through, if you begin to give God praise, if you believe it, you can receive it. But if you believe it, you just have to show that you believe it. And the way that you convince yourself that you're believing, you go on and begin to praise God for it. Well, I don't have it in my hand yet, but I know it's on the way. And there will be people that say, and kind of try to discourage you. Well, you don't have it yet, but I know it's on the way. How do you know it's on the way? Because God promised it, and God is not a God that will come God in his word. And if they have a problem believing it, and try to convince you not to believe, go back and read what the word. I believe what the word says. Because there are many that don't want to right. right. show yes. your faith. Right. Amen. And many will look at you and call yes. you crazy yes. right. if you say, I'm going to receive this. And they say, how you know? You can't afford it. Right. All right. How you going to get it? Mm. God's given it to you. Amen. Say that. Say that. Mm -hmm. And you'll find the folks in the church will start sliding down to the other end of the seat sometimes. He's lost his rabid mind. (laughs) Call the folks with the white jackets with all those fancy straps. Mm -hmm. Tie him up. He's lost his mind. (laughs) But I want to tell you. God will amaze. You ask God for something. And do you know how God do it? Will even amaze the one that's asked him? Mm-hmm. We can't figure out how this person on the other side of the world knew what you need. Amen. They did it. God did. Yes. And once God knows what your need is, yes, yes, yes. and you have oh, yes. the faith to believe yes, that God is going to supply, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who else knows. As a matter of fact, just a little word to the wise. Yes. Be careful who you tell mm. what you've asked God for. Yes. There are many who don't want you to receive what you're asking God for. And they will do everything they can to block you from getting what you've asked God for. And you know how they block us? They can't block us from God's end. They block us from our end. As soon as they convince you Mm -hmm. that this might not happen, and you begin to believe what they say. We like to use the scripture in the positive sense. I know God is going to supply my needs according to his riches and glory. And we begin to confess.
confess things with our mouth. But as soon as you begin to tell other people about it, and they begin to tell you how impossible it is, and how they got theirs, and what they had to do to get theirs, and if God didn't do it for you, for me, he's not going to do it for you either. And you begin to listen. Yeah. And you begin to believe what they're saying. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Just as you walk through this door this morning, if you came expecting to believe, expecting to receive something from the Lord, you won't be disappointed. Because you'll receive something from the Lord. But if you came expecting not to receive anything from God, you won't be disappointed either. Amen. You just won't receive anything. Because that was what you expected when you came through the door. Amen. Be careful who you associate with. Yeah. And be even more careful who you pour out your heart Amen. and your prayers to. Amen. When God hears your prayer, he's the one that's able to answer. Yes, yes. yes. And sometimes we feel that the more people we tell, the quicker God is going to move. Mm. Sometimes the more people you tell, the less you believe. Mm -hmm. Because they have a way of telling you, God's not going to do that. How do you know God's going to do it? When did he tell you? Mm -hmm. How did he tell you? And by the time they finish questioning you, they can't hurt you. It's until you begin to question yourself. Did God really say this? Mm -hmm. Am I on the wrong track? Believe what God said. Amen. And don't let anybody allow your faith in God to be shaken because of your faith. Amen. Amen. Amen.